just recently there was a poll in Iowa and it matched all the four of us up against Obama. And guess what? I did the very best. I, and it was is cutting our military budget by roughly a trillion dollars. The world is more dangerous. It is not safer. Uh, I think this is a very sober period, and I believe this is the most dangerous president on national security grounds in American history. Just because I'm talking about it doesn't mean I want a government program to fix it. That's what they do. That's not what we do. Well, it was certainly another spirited debate. Joining us this morning to talk about this, our Congressman Jeff Flake of Arizona's 6th District. He is also a Senate candidate and a Romney supporter, along with Mike O'Neill, who is a political analyst and uh, a pollster based right here in the Valley. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Uh, I want to start with this, because what, we had 19 debates leading up to what we saw here in the Valley last night. Does the outcome really make a difference in where we're going to be, say, uh, on Super Tuesday and with what's happening here in, I guess, Michigan and Arizona and Washington on Tuesday? Well, I think these debates uh, had a tremendous difference. I mean, you see Rick Perry who got in, was up in every poll. After the first debate, boom, he's down. Second debate, boom, he's out. Uh, so they've made a difference. Uh, Newt Gingrich, uh, early on, did well in the debates. Uh, he rose, but now he's fallen. So the debates have had a big impact. He was awfully quiet last night, and there were some interesting moments with him, because when he did speak, and a lot of analysts are saying this this morning, he really made some interesting points. I think some points that a lot of people are talking about this morning. Yeah, well, I, I think, you know, the long-term impact of this debate may be bigger than most of them. We've gone a month without a debate, and it's entirely possible that this, this is the last one. In a way, this was the last opportunity for the other candidates to uh, take out a piece of, of Mitt Romney. And, uh, and frankly, I don't think they did it. So I, I think that's the enduring. We started with a front runner and we left the debate with a front runner and they may not get another opportunity. Well, a lot of the analysts are saying that Santorum wasn't as strong as he probably should have been given the fact that he went in with such right. strong momentum. He was the one who had to do something and I'm not sure he did. Right, okay, let's get to the earmarks issue because there was a lot of talk about earmarks and we have some sound on this and then we're going to have both of you gentlemen uh, kind of respond to it. Okay, apparently we don't have that sound available. So while we're working on that, I do want to talk about this issue of housing because that's being brought up here in the state of Arizona. There was no talk about that. And considering the fact that these four men were right here in our backyard and we're one of three states dealing with this in a really bad way, what do you say to that? Why wasn't it talked about? Well, well go ahead. my answer is, uh, you know, the, the, the president has tried to tackle this this uh, as a single industry, saying we're going to fix the housing crisis and we're going to have the, first it was the HAMP and then it was the HAMP and the HUMP and the whatever, mm -hmm. all these individually tailored programs to deal with the foreclosure crisis. And it never works. Uh, if, if, if we're going to fix the housing crisis here in Arizona, it's going to be when, when we have more jobs, when we have a growing economy overall. And I think that's recognized, or at least that's what Republicans believe, perhaps more than than Democrats. And so uh, I, I wasn't surprised that it wasn't dealt with individually because uh, a growing economy is what is going to get us out of this housing mess. Well, my short answer is we didn't deal with the topic of housing because the CNN moderator chose not to ask a question about it. And, and there was no logical lead into that specific question, so it wasn't covered. There was a logical lead in, though, to the issue of gas prices. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Newt Gingrich actually touched on that pretty early on, and yet it fell flat. Well, uh, Republicans have made the case that uh, the president hasn't approved the Keystone Pipeline. That would make us more uh, energy independent. Uh, some of the reason the gas prices are high now is because of uncertainty in the Straits of Hormuz. And so uh, that, that point was made, but uh, I agree, not, not, not very loudly. Right. Well, it's a logical Republican talking point. You know, a few months ago, it was the economy is in shambles. It looked like, like we are potentially at the beginning of a recovery here. And so I think what you've seen there is a parry to another issue, and gas prices are rising, and that's never popular. Well, and then you've got New Gingrich saying that he hopes to get gas prices down to that, you know, $2 level. And they showed John mm -hmm. King's reaction to that, and he almost poo-pooed it, which was very <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Let's get to the issue of birth control, because it was very interesting to see New Gingrich <laughs> make that response. And it, it was almost like he answered for everybody so that he could put it back on to the president. Right. Well, uh, they, go ahead. Well, I thought... That was Romney's Ronald Reagan moment 
the I paid for this microphone kind of moment when he said, you get to ask the questions, but I decide to give the answer right. that I want. What so he asked a get? question about birth control and he answered in terms of jobs. And basically he did so in a very assertive fashion that I think uh, had very much had the crowd with him. Well, do you think, I mean, yes, certainly the crowd. And I saw that and I thought, boy, is, is that going to hurt him or is that going to help him? And it was interesting because the way he rounded out the answer, I think, helped to lend some balance there. I but at first it was a little stuck. All four people on that day us knew that getting into that issue was a loser for the Republicans. And so the best thing they could do was to change the subject. And you'll notice none of them dealt with that issue. Right. Yeah, you know, they brought it back when, when they had to address it to religious freedom, and that's what uh, uh, certainly plays uh, in Republicans' favor, is to bring it back to this is an assault on religious freedom that doesn't have really anything to do with contraception. All right, gentlemen, well, we thank you for your input this morning. Very much so. Appreciate thank it. You.